السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear little children, tonight is the night of the 28th of the Hijjah, 1442 years of the Hijrah of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu which coincides with August 7, 2021. I welcome you back to our Prophets and Messengers series and we are speaking about the great Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. We have done many of his lessons before and we have uh, left some of the discussion with regards to his life very small discussion and inshallah we'll conclude uh, in next few classes his uh, the stories of his life inshallah ta'ala. today the topic is prophet ibrahim alayhi salam and the dead birds this story is mentioned in the quran in surah al-baqarah in only one verse very short story very sweet story but full of lots of lesson but before that what is the purpose of learning the stories of the prophets and the messengers one of the purpose of learning the stories of the Prophet and the Messengers is for us to connect ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through that to strengthen our heart, strengthen our faith. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hud, verse number 120, And all that we relate to you, Muhammad, from the news of the Messengers, مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ uh, In order that we make your, make strong and form form your heart. And this is Allah Ta'ala specifically talked about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So what about who are lower than them, lower than him, who we are? What about those people who are lower than the Sahaba? We need to strengthen our heart too. So these stories are there, a constant reminder to strengthen our heart. And all of these stories are like breathing, eating, sleeping, drinking. At all time, you can remember them and strengthen your heart. Whenever you feel your Iman is weak and you are not uh, enthusiastic to do good deeds or you are falling into haram, prohibition, these are the stories to remember. How they devoted their life and how they submitted to Allah. And that would encourage us to be better than what we are today. Maybe it will stop us from committing haram and maybe it will encourage us to do more good. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues by saying وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَقِّ وَمَوْعِظَةُ وَذِكْرَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And in this, meaning in the Quran, has come to you the truth. So these stories are true as well as an admonition. So these stories are admonition and a reminder for the believers. Reminder that they have to rejuvenate their faith. They have to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this story teaches us, the story that we are going to hear today teaches us the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He can create life just like that and He can cause death just like that. And He can control everything just like that in the blinking of an eye. Allah can create life from nothing. And also if He chooses, He can create uh, life from something it, it, it always fascinates people and they want to know the definition of life how life is created what is soul what is ruh and so on and so forth and this is a very good question and making inquiry about this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with respect is, is good however we need to know that the answers what we want Allah might not give all the answers to us Maybe some of the answers, some of the answer to these questions, but not all of it. So whatever he teaches us, that's enough for us. And we should be satisfied with the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This story is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 260. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى And remember when Ibrahim said, My Lord, show me how you give life to death, how you bring back dead 
things to life. Qala awalam tu'min. Allah asks him, don't you believe? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he asks questions like this, of course he knows the answer. Because he is no, the all-knower. But he still asks and gives the opportunity to, the, to his slaves to answer. If it's a righteous, righteous slave, he answers good way. And if it's an unrighteous slave, he will be arrogant. Prophet Ibrahim was one of the righteous slaves, the Khalil of Allah, the close friend of Allah. He said, Qala bala. He said, for sure, I do. But I'm, I'm asking you so that I want to, for the satisfaction of my heart. For the satisfaction of my heart. Allah Ta'ala tells him, take four birds, choose four birds. Fasurhunna ilaika. So this recitation has two reading. Fasurhunna, fasirhunna. And both of the recitation or the reading means cut them into pieces and divide them. Kill them and cut them into pieces and divide them. How to divide them Allah doesn't mention here. Of course he mentioned it to Prophet Ibrahim but he doesn't tell us all of this. Then Allah Ta'ala says ثُمَّ جَعَلْ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ جَبَلٍ مِّنْهُنَّ And then put a portion of whatever you divide in every mountain. Every mountain. So seems like there were some mountains there where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ordered Prophet Ibrahim to put these pieces of cut, it, cut piece of birds four types of bird to put in different on top of the different mountain thumma du'uhunna ya'tinaka sa'iya then call 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 them to you call them and they will come to you rushing they will come to you rushing wa'lam anna allaha azizun hakim and know that allah is almighty and all wise someone might listen to this story and say prophet ibrahim is asking allah to raise the dead which means maybe his faith was not strong. And as you know, Iblis is always there. He can put all sorts of bad thought in our mind about Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. So look at your Prophet. He does this. So through this he can make you, make us disrespect Prophet Ibrahim. Also, he might, Iblis might say, Oh look, he was such a great Prophet. He was questioning Allah. And you can do anything that you want. And then he can make the slaves of Allah will be disobedient and they'll say, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that, I don't care. Because Prophet Ibrahim asked Allah, so if he asked Allah, why can't I do this, why can't I do that? So all of these bad thoughts can come. That's why we need to know the manners of reading the Quran and the Sunnah and how to maintain respect for the great prophets and the messengers and the Sahaba. Same thing when we are hearing the stories of the companions, sometimes you will see some of the companions, maybe they were disputing with each other. We should not have any disrespect in our heart. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu taught the Sahaba. And this hadith is reported by Imam al-Bukhari. Look at the manner. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger Sallallahu said, Nahnu ahakku bi shakki min Ibrahim. Idh qala rabbi arini kayfa tuhi al-mawta. Qala awalam tu'min. Qala bala wala kill yatuma inna kalbi. The translation of which is the Prophet ﷺ is teaching his companions. He said that we have more right to be in doubt than Ibrahim. When he said, my Lord, show me how you raise the life from dead. Now, why did the Prophet ﷺ say we have more right to be in doubt than Ibrahim? So Prophet, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is teaching the companions that never ever think from the blinking of an eye. For the blinking of an eye, that, that small time, think that Prophet Ibrahim had doubt in his heart. If anybody can have doubt, it's, it's you and me. We can have the doubt. And the Prophet put him there. Although we know Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Muhammad, none of them has any doubt about Allah's ability to raise the dead. But this is one of the ways the Prophet showed his humbleness. And he didn't put want to put himself above Prophet Ibrahim. So forget about putting anybody else above Prophet Ibrahim or any of the prophets and messengers or any of the righteous companions of the prophets and the messengers especially the sahaba of our prophet how many people they have sometimes so many ill manners to the companions sometimes they talk about a companion as if he is lower than him he is nothing and this happens because they do not know how to read the quran and the sunnah that's why we have to Learn how to read the Quran and the Sunnah from our scholars. Just by reading the Quran with beautiful tone, 
It is not anything. You will not gain anything out of it. That's, that's one thing good, that you are reading Quran and somebody has a good melody, is reading Quran, that's good. But at the end of the day, it's valueless. It has no value. Unless this Quran has an effect upon yourself. So this is what the Prophet taught. He would close all the doors of disbelief, of disrespect to these great personalities. And that's exactly what Allah Ta'ala taught him. And that shows that the Prophet when he read the Quran, his heart was getting strong because he, 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 he loved Quran. He wanted to learn the Quran with, so that he could practice it. So we should never read these stories with a, uh, uh, with, with a mind that's going to take us somewhere else and say something for which we will be held accountable in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we know that Prophet Ibrahim, of course he believed in the resurrection, how Allah Ta'ala raises the dead. But since he had a special relationship with Allah, the Khalil of Allah, he was the friend of Allah. That's why he had that opportunity to request him. He was not demanding, he was requesting Allah. It's like, you know, sometimes when your friends come and tell you, did you know we went for a vacation at a certain place, so beautiful. You say, okay, I want to see the pictures. They show the pictures, wow, it's so beautiful. I can't even believe we have this kind of places to visit. But it will be completely different if you go there. Then when you go there and you see the same thing that you saw in the picture, you will know that that picture doesn't do the justice. Because there's something called seeing with the eyes. Seeing with the eyes is different than hearing from somebody else. But here, we have to clarify something. When it comes to the belief in the unseen, of course it is possible to believe in all the matters of unseen without seeing it. So if it was important for us to see the unseen, like to see Allah, to start with, see the angels, see all the prophets and messengers, see the Jannah, the paradise, see the hellfire, Allah would have shown it to us. But since Allah didn't show it to us and He commanded us to believe in them, which is the matter of unseen, we know that it is very possible. It is very possible to believe in. But then how come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed Prophet Ibrahim to see something which he would not allow anybody else? This is first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing us how, how high level of respect Prophet Ibrahim has amongst all, the, amongst all of the other creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, Allah is teaching Prophet Ibrahim and also through him the whole mankind, his power and ability. So, and that is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically educated Prophet Ibrahim with. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلْيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ And thus we did show Ibrahim the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, and that he be one of those who he is from the muqinin, who has certain faith, who has faith with certainty. So when we see all of this creation, the nature, the beauty of Allah's creation, it should con constantly make us elevate our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's exactly what happened to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks him, Awalam tu'min? Don't you believe? So he answers, Qalu bala. Of course I believe. Walakin liyatuma inna qalbi. So he gives the reason. Humble reason. Now here is the thing. If Allah could have told him, no, I'm not going to show him. And that would be the end of the story. But here, Allah did sh show, show him. But Allah showed him visually something. So what is it? He told him, قَالَ فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةَ مِنَ الطَّيْبِ Choose four birds, فَصُرْهُنَّ إِلَيْكَ Cut them into pieces and divide them. Cut them and divide them into pieces. ثُمَّ جَعَلْ عَلَى كُلِّ جَبَلٍ مِّنْهُنَّ جُزْأَ And then put small parts on each of the mountains. ثُمَّ دُعُهُنَّ Then call them to you. يَأْتِينَ كَسَعِيَا They will come to you rushing. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ Azizun Hakim, know that Allah is mighty and Allah is the most wise. For a bird to come to a full state of, you know, maturity or, or to gain the, 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 the through, they have to go through a life cycle. So for example, first they have, they have, the, they have the embryo in the egg, then the mother bird hatches the egg, then the bird comes out, it has no feather as you know, and the mother feeds them. And they keep on eating and pooping and eating and pooping until they grow feather 
and then they want to fly and they fall and they want to fly and they fall and then they gradually get to fly and they grow and they become mature this is the life cycle of a bird everybody knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this story is showing us that he does not need to create a full grown bird and it has to go through a life cycle he can just do it like that this is one of the lessons we learn from this story the nature has its law but this law is created by Allah and this law takes place by the permission of Allah the birds cannot lay eggs unless Allah wills the mother bird cannot hatch the egg unless Allah wills and those infant birds cannot live until Allah wills and they will not be able to get the nutrition until Allah wills and they will not be able to achieve all of their milestones as they grow until Allah wills so here you have this strange story the birds are all killed put them in different parts and then Prophet Ibrahim is calling them this is why the birds are raised back to life no Allah is telling him to create the cause you call them and they will come to you by Allah's permission it is not that Prophet Ibrahim raised them to death it's Allah who raised them to death these are called understanding the cause and effect and the mechanism of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he wants to create something as he te teaches in the Quran innama qawluna li shay'in idha aradnahu an yaqula lahu kun fayakun verily our word unto a thing when we intend it meaning if you want something to happen if Allah wants something to happen it is only we say be and it will be there and this is exactly what happened to these birds this is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now a lot of children they ask this question what kind of birds they were we know that there were four kind of birds because Allah mentions but what kind of birds also Allah mentions divide them up how did they how did you tell them to divide them? How many pieces each birds were cut into? Uh, how many mountains there were? How old was Prophet Ibrahim when he asked this question to Allah? Was he very young or was he very old? We have no answer for all of these questions. However, there are some people when they mention these stories, they add information. They say that one of the word bird was a crane, another bird was a peacock, another bird was a pigeon, another bird was a crow and all of these things. They say there were four mountains. Some said there were eight mountains or nine mountains and some say Allah Ta'ala told them to him to cut and mix up all the pieces and divide them. All this information that they mention and extra, these are not from any authentic sources. These are all from some weak unverified sources. So what is important for us to know these stories is from the true source and keep it as it is we don't need to know all this additional information unless they're verified by the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam the most important lesson of learning these stories is after learning the stories we should see what what did it do to us is, is it a fairy tale, fairy tale is it a story to say wow amazing is it a good bed night uh, like, uh, uh, bedtime sleep story? No. It is a story as Allah Ta'ala said, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلْ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادًا To increase our faith, to strengthen our heart. So if this story doesn't strengthen our heart, then which means that we are not fulfilling the purpose of listening to these stories. And that's why, look, after mentioning this short story, what does Allah Ta'ala say? وَعْلَمْ Know that أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ so Allah Ta'ala says the purpose of this story is for you to know my Lordship that I am the Supreme He is the Aziz, He is the Mighty and He is the Hakim, He is the Wise since He is the Most Wise and He told us this information this is enough for us to know we do not need any additional information we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to strengthen our heart so that we can worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and meet Him with the heart which is Allah, Allah Ta'ala says Bin Salim, with a good heart, with a clean heart, with a healthy heart on the Day of Judgment. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik.
والسلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ